The book of Genesis describes the Garden of Eden as paradise. That was before the serpent tempted Eve to eat of the forbidden fruit. As punishment for so great a sin, God condemned all snakes to spend their lives crawling on their bellies. Far from being floundering legless beasts, snakes have risen from the primeval mist as awesome killers. More subtle than any other animal, they can move and strike with lightning speed. They've become one of the most feared creatures on earth. always had a special relationship with snakes, part fascination, part fear. Some say the cursing of the serpent symbolizes the ultimate victory of God over Satan, others that it represents sexual passion as a sin. Snakes are also linked with desire and fear in Greek mythology. Medusa was said to be stunningly beautiful, yet her hair was a mass of writhing snakes anyone tempted to gaze upon her immediately turned to stone. The snake has had a mixed reputation. The Greek god of healing shows the snake as an emblem of medicine. It features on the badge of the Royal Army Medical Corps. Anthony called Cleopatra the serpent of Old Nile. She died holding an asp to her bosom. St. Patrick is credited with banishing snakes from Ireland, but since there have never been any snakes in Ireland, the feat was more legendary than magical. The idea of giant snakes fascinated early explorers. They returned with tales of pythons a hundred feet long, requiring a small army to subdue them. As travel became more widespread, snakes got cut down to size. The longest recorded snake is a python, 33 feet long. Perhaps the most persistent legend about snakes is the power of music to charm them. Snakes don't have effective ears, so never hear the charmer's pipes. It's the movement of the instrument that fascinates them. Many snake charmers partly sew up the lips of their serpents to lower the risk of being bitten. The true facts about snakes are as amazing as the myths and legends. There are at least 2,000 species. Less than 15% of these are venomous. All are extremely skilled predators. They evolved from lizards about 130 million years ago. Unlike snakes, lizards have eyelids that can blink, external ears that hear very well, and usually four powerful legs. These lizards seem to be caught halfway in the evolutionary chain. The legs of this blue-tongued skink from Australia are hardly big enough to carry its squat, heavy body.
skinks spend their lives tunneling through sandy soil and don't need strong limbs to support their weight. Snakes may have evolved from burrowing lizards, which over millions of years eventually lost their legs altogether. The slow worm is a lizard, although it looks like a snake. It doesn't have any external limbs, but inside its body, it still has the skeletal remnants of the legs it has lost. The European worm lizard doesn't have either external or internal legs. In 50 million years, its descendants may possibly become true snakes, though they will have to change more than their shape to do so. The ancients thought this lizard was extremely venomous. In fact, they're harmless. Some snakes still have traces of limbs. The large constrictors have the remains of hind legs, which look like claws. Being legless doesn't stop them. Even a snake as large as this 17-foot African python is surprisingly versatile. Snakes possess up to 400 ribs. They're moved by powerful muscles in sections. The remnant hind legs of pythons and boas are attached to the pelvic girdle. The bulge passing overhead is where a broken rib has healed. It is a combination of the ribs and muscles which make a snake so flexible. There's much more to a snake's movement than a superb rippling of muscles. The belly scales are enlarged and can overlap, giving the snake incredible traction. Like the python, the African puff adder moves in exactly the same way. Snakes are superbly designed, but even they lose their grip in soft sand. To overcome this problem, vipers and rattlesnakes which live in deserts have evolved a method of moving called sidewinding. The horned rattlesnake, or sidewinder, only touches the ground with two points of its body at any one moment. The snake throws itself into a series of S-bends and skims over the sand. The world's fastest snakes are the black mamba and the hissing sand snake. The latter is also distinguished for the fact that it neither hisses nor lives in sandy places. It can reach speeds of up to six miles per hour, making it difficult to catch.
There are many advantages to having a long, muscular, limbless body, but there are problems. Eating is one of them. Snakes habitually swallow prey far bigger than their own heads. This African vine snake is about to eat a chameleon. It looks impossible, and would be so if a snake couldn't disarticulate its jaw. The quadrate bone in the lower jaw acts like a hinge, enabling the mouth almost literally to fall apart. Snakes have small, sharp teeth for holding on to their prey. They can't chew with them. The vine snake's body muscles pull the chameleon towards its stomach. Having no legs does not hinder an attacking snake. A long, muscular body provides all venomous snakes with the power to strike their victims with devastating speed. At normal speed, this puff adder strike occupies one frame of film. It lasts one twenty-fifth of a second. Many people think they can be bitten by the snake's forked tongue. It's harmless and is used to detect scents in the air, but by taste rather than smell. Snakes inject venom into their victims through a pair of fangs. There are two types of venom. Vipers and rattlesnakes use hematoxins, which break down blood vessels. Other species, like this green mamba, inject neurotoxins, which paralyze the nervous system. The most dangerous snakes can kill within minutes. Venoms which are modified saliva, have two purposes, to immobilize prey and to break down its victim's body tissues. Snakes cannot chew like other animals, so the venom helps to speed up the digestive process. The boomslang is a deadly back-fanged snake. It's difficult for a snake whose fangs are at the rear of its mouth to bite victims as large as humans. This snake appears to have four fangs, it's quite common to find a second pair growing to replace the front ones when they break or wear out. The pits at the top are where the venom enters. On small prey, the strike of a back-fanged snake is fatal. The fangs of vipers and rattlesnakes are positioned at the front of their mouths and fold back when not in use. The small teeth behind are simply for holding their prey. These fangs are hollow, and the venom is injected from the tip like a hypodermic needle. They are much longer than back fangs and easy to sink into the flesh of small prey or larger enemies. The Gaboon Viper has the longest fangs they can measure one and three-quarter inches. The spitting cobras deliver their nerve poisons through the most specialized teeth of all. All cobras are front-fanged and the fangs are fixed. But the spitting cobra has an amazing weapon. The poison duct is totally enclosed and there's a forward-facing hole at the front of each tooth. When the snake compresses its venom sacs, the fangs act like water pistols squirting venom accurately up to 12 feet, usually at the eyes of the enemy. They are used for defense rather than attack. It's estimated that worldwide, up to 40,000 people a year die from snake bites. Figures increase in the tropics as more land is farmed and workers are exposed to sleeping or slow-moving snakes. Still, more people die from bee stings than from snake bite.
Non-poisonous snakes rely on their powerful muscular bodies to kill their prey. The constrictors literally squeeze the life out of their victims. It's a popular belief that constrictors crush their prey. In fact, they suffocate them. After disarticulating its jaw, the snake searches for the narrow front end of its victim in order to swallow it head first. Even poisonous snakes have enemies. Camouflage cuts both ways. It conceals this adder from its prey and predators. The puff adder's mottled coloring blends in perfectly with the dappled shade of the forest floor. Its venom is one of the most lethal hematoxins, but like most snakes, it will move off as soon as it feels the vibrations of heavy footsteps. The Gaboon viper is one of Africa's deadliest snakes and perfectly camouflaged. It's dangerous because it tends to freeze when threatened, making it difficult to spot and easy to step on. Arboreal snakes like the green mamba also rely on camouflage, mimicking the trees in which they live. A few snakes can feign death to fool enemies. It's unusual for a grass snake to resort to this tactic. Its normal defense is to emit a foul-smelling fluid from glands near the tail. Only when the danger has passed does it move again. Some species warn off intruders in other ways. Each time a rattlesnake sheds its skin, the last scale stays on and is added to the end of its tail. The scales fit loosely inside each other and rattle when vibrated. It's a warning to possible enemies. The rattler's aim is to stay out of trouble to avoid wasting venom it could better use killing prey. The gopher snake is a fake. It's harmless, but by mimicking a rattlesnake, it confuses its enemies into thinking it's as poisonous as it's look-alike. Bright colors are often a warning of danger, but not all banded snakes are venomous. Here's a life-saving rhyme, red next to yellow, kill a fellow, red next to black, venom lack. The coral snake is deadly. The scarlet king snake has red bands following black and is completely harmless. The snake's enemies cannot distinguish such subtle color differences, and by copying its deadly relatives, it is less likely to get eaten. Sometimes, it's hard to tell the difference.
The Californian king snake lacks the red bands altogether, but its striped pattern still confuses its enemies. One thing which distinguishes king snakes is their appetite for other snakes. They do get bitten, but seem immune to venom that could kill a man. The spitting cobra has three defense mechanisms. Enlarging its neck by expanding its so-called hood makes it look bigger and more threatening. It can bite and inject venom into an attacker, but it also spits the fluid at the eyes of an enemy. The result is extremely painful, and if not washed out immediately, can cause blindness. Snakes are lithe, agile, and can move with astonishing speed. They are formidable predators, yet they are surprisingly vulnerable to attack. Some species, like the African file snake, specialize in catching and eating their own kind. Since snakes have no awkward legs, the victim is easy to swallow. They have enemies among their close relatives, the lizards. African monitor lizards know that termite mounds shelter many different animals. The pygmy mongooses who live inside the mounds are usually too quick for a monitor, but a spitting cobra is slower than the lizard and is fair game. A spitting cobra is a formidable snake for a monitor to tackle. The lizard is not intimidated by the raised hood, and it has special eyelids to protect its eyes should the snake spit. The snake bites the monitor, but it has little effect. Either the lizard's scaly skin is so tough the cobra cannot pierce it with its fangs, or the monitor has some immunity to snake venom. Several birds of prey are specialist snake hunters. The African secretary bird kills snakes by stamping on them with its powerful feet. The European short-toed eagle swoops down on its prey.
It must grab the snake's head if it's to avoid being bitten during the struggle. Snakes have many predators, but their worst enemies are humans. Snakes do claim lives, but the risks from snake bites have been blown out of all proportion. Fear has led people to persecute them beyond reasonable bounds of self-protection. Rattlesnake roundups started as small local affairs in the West to reduce the number of rattlers round schools and houses. Roundups are now popular and highly commercial events. It's not unknown for 13,000 rattlesnakes to be brought in from one district alone. Many have been caught, not just in the two-day roundup, but all through the year, and saved for this appalling circus. Who's got my knife? I got it over here. Junior, you got one over here. Here. Well, that's, that's right. They wasn't one over here. No, you're right. During the show, they're beheaded to provide meat, skins, and a sort of macabre entertainment. Even the extraction of venom serves no useful purpose. It's done purely to entertain the crowds. Afterwards, the skins will be turned into souvenirs. It is always the dangerous side of the snake's life that is emphasized. Snakes actually spend less time killing than most other predators because their victims are comparatively large and take a long time to digest. Snakes are cold-blooded. They take on the temperature of their surroundings. These prairie rattlers are soaking up the last of the autumn sun before going into hibernation for winter. The dens they use are often traditional ones, like this cave. Rattlesnakes from miles around migrate to these places before winter sets in. The scene inside such a den has a sinister quality few horror movies can match. The returning warmth of spring reverses the process. This writhing mass of garter snakes will soon disperse across the countryside. One of the first things a snake does on emerging from hibernation is to shed its skin. A sign that this is about to happen is the time when the eye covering goes opaque. A snake sheds several times a year, either to accommodate its growing body or because the old skin is wearing out. The first split occurs on the upper lip, then the transparent eye covering, which is a modified scale, comes away.
This is the so-called adder dance, often associated with courtship. It's not a dance, but a ritualized combat between two males competing over a female. They have the power to seriously hurt each other, but it's really just a test of strength. The weaker contestant will give in long before there's any need to resort to biting. The winner has established his right to mate with the female. She's less strikingly marked than the male and much bigger. Adders are among those snakes which give birth to live young. The females have to be large enough to carry up to 18 babies inside their bodies. Most reptiles, including snakes, lay eggs. Birds evolved from reptiles and also lay eggs, but their offspring are dependent on their parents for the first few weeks of life. Very few snakes show any parental care. Grass snakes often lay in a warm, moist compost heap, but once they've laid, they'll take no further interest in their eggs. Snakes sometimes lay eggs with a well-developed embryo inside. There's never an embryo inside a newly laid bird's egg. Another difference is that a snake's egg is covered in a membranous skin. They don't need a hard shell to support the weight of a brooding adult. Female snakes don't look after their offspring. To ensure that at least a few survive, they can lay up to 40 eggs. Inside the egg, it will take the snake embryos six weeks to develop. Five days after laying, the coils of the baby snake's body are clearly visible. The eye is already well developed, and the heart beats strongly. At six days, the head of the little grass snake is taking shape. There's another very big difference between a snake's and a bird's egg. A chick is attached to its yolk and develops outside it. The snake grows inside the yolk. This is the head two weeks after the egg was laid. At three weeks, the embryo is looking more like a snake. In two more weeks, the body, glimpsed through the opening in the yolk, has acquired scales. Both bird and snake embryos have an egg tooth, which they use to tear their way out of the shell. At six weeks, they're nearly ready to hatch. The eye is opaque because one of the first things the little snake will do on emerging is to slough its skin. It's August when the tiny grass snakes emerge. Autumn and hibernation are only two months away. 
Before then, they must double their body weight and put on fat to withstand the cold. Those that fail to find enough food will probably perish. Protected under this rocky overhang, a prairie rattlesnake has just given birth. Rattlesnakes produce live young. The embryos are contained in a thin membrane inside the mother's body and break out just before birth. It looks as though this mother is protecting her brood, but she is resting after her labors and hasn't yet moved off to leave her family to fend for itself. The babies are not helpless. Like all poisonous snakes, they are equipped with deadly venom from birth. Snakes are ingenious predators. Weaver birds build hanging nests with small tunnel-like entrances to baffle enemies. They foil most raiders, but not the African boomslang. The small head and slim body penetrate the most cunningly contrived entrance. There's nothing the parents can do except watch as the young birds are taken. A pair of thrashers nesting in a choya cactus in Arizona have more success against a red racer. The snake eventually gave up, and the nest was saved. The most consistently successful nest robber of all is the egg-eating snake. It eats nothing but eggs. It lives throughout tropical Africa, where there are always some birds nesting throughout the year. Once it has swallowed an egg many times the size of its own head, the egg eater moves it by muscular contractions until the shell comes in contact with several sharp, bony spikes. These are elongations of its vertebrae. It twists its neck until the spikes crack the shell. The contents of the egg slip down into the snake's stomach. It then regurgitates the indigestible pieces of broken shell because their sharp edges might damage its delicate inside. A valve ensures that the contents of the egg aren't brought back up with the shell. Eggs provide a high-protein diet, but in most parts of the world, they're only available seasonally, so few snakes can feed exclusively on this food.
pit vipers and rattlesnakes have developed a very specialized method of finding prey. Between their nostrils and eyes are deep pits. These are infrared heat sensors. They're so sensitive, they can detect differences of a fraction of a degree. They can pick up the body heat of a mouse at several yards in total darkness, and they can tell when it has disappeared down a hole. We can only give an impression of the message those heat detectors receive by following the mouse with a thermal imaging camera. The heat pits detect a potential target. The forked tongue helps to confirm direction and range by sense of taste. The camera breaks the image down into colors. The hottest parts are yellow, the next hottest red, pink, and so on to the cooler blues and greens. The snake wouldn't see it like this, but its receptors are so acute, they would certainly detect the different degrees of body heat in the mouse. When the snake gets close to its hidden prey, it homes in on the hot spots. The mouse bounds off, but it's been bitten, and the venom will ensure that it doesn't get far. Sense of smell will be sufficient now to help the snake find its meal. It isn't often realized how at ease practically all snakes are in water. The common grass snake is well adapted to aquatic hunting. All snakes can swim, and many can stay submerged for a considerable length of time. Grass snakes hunt small fish and frogs. The ultimate freshwater snake lives in the Amazon basin. There, one explorer claimed to have seen an anaconda 60 feet long. This anaconda is a mere 12 feet in length. It's the body width that's so intimidating. The anaconda is a giant constrictor that probably doesn't exceed 30 feet in the wild. Even a snake 12 feet long is capable of constricting and eating a four-foot caiman. An anaconda usually attacks in the water or at the water's edge. It's a huge meal but the snake will eventually manage to swallow it. Large snakes have been known to eat prey equal to their own body weight, and then may not do so again for several weeks. Snakes have exploited most of the world's tropical and temperate habitats, including the warm seas. Sea snakes are one of the most extreme examples of adaptation. 
They're related to the cobras, and they're found in all tropical oceans except the Atlantic. Their venom is one of the most lethal of all. They've adapted their body shape entirely to the marine environment. They've developed small heads for exploring rock and coral crevices for small eels and reef fish. Their tails have become flattened to act like a paddle when swimming. Some species can breathe through their skin, allowing them to stay underwater longer. Sea snakes can stay submerged for an hour. Their nostrils are closed by watertight valves. Eventually, they have to come to the surface for air. Some sea snakes, and there are over 50 species, rarely, if ever, go ashore. They mate and bear up to half a dozen live young in the ocean, so they are completely safe from land predators. Courtship and mating rituals are very similar to those of terrestrial snakes. A male swims in consort with a female until she's ready to mate. There's no effective anti-venom for the sea snake's deadly neurotoxins. But in the water, they are not aggressive. Very few people get bitten because the snake's mouths and fangs are too small. Even so, they are extremely dangerous. The venom is usually fatal, but slow acting. By the time the symptoms appear, it's invariably too late. Experienced scientists handle them with careful confidence. This is an extremely large olive sea snake. Amateur divers, even if they are wearing a wetsuit and gloves, should never do this. Although these lethal snakes are exceptionally docile and have never been known to attack a diver, people sometimes get bitten by mistake. The snakes will approach divers out of curiosity. The bizarre stories which are the basis for people's widespread fear of snakes are almost all untrue. Few of them attack, even in self-defense, unless severely provoked, and the vast majority are completely harmless. Far from being miserable, legless beasts, snakes have conquered almost every habitat on Earth. Millions of years have turned them into masters of disguise and deception. They are stunningly efficient killers. Over the ages, this supreme predator has been a source of fascination and for some, the cause of uncontrollable fear. Thank you.